Yes, please come. Uh, namaste. 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 Yeah. namaste. Good evening. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. So, we begin with your brief introduction. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my name is Kaushik Mergu, sir. And I hail from the state of Telangana. And I have completed uh, my undergraduation uh, from civil engineering, sir. From Usman University College of Engineering. Suppose that I have done my uh, master's in business administration. from indian Inst institute of foreign trade delhi campus and uh, i have also worked for one year as a consultant uh, in the insurance business consulting division sir of cap gemini uh, yes so kashik uh, you are from telangana yes sir. and you worked in hyderabad yes sir. so tell us something about it software and services sector of telangana uh, sir uh, so the growth of it uh, sector of telangana happened in the uh, during the it boom that happened in the world sir and uh, the formation of the high tech city that is the hyderabad international and uh, technological and engineering services consultancy services city has uh, led to boost of this growth sir and uh, the advantage that hyderabad has is uh, there are major uh, centers of uh, major tech companies like google uh, facebook uh, and even amazon Uh, that have their major uh, operations in hyderabad sir and uh, along with this sir uh, there is also innovation that is happening in this space mm -hmm. uh, in the it sector with the coming up of t hub and uh, also new age startups uh, this is leading to uh, the overall growth sir uh, uh you have done your mba from iift right yes sir now tell me we are stuck on foreign trade agreement with eu yes sir how do you think eu is important for us that's one and uh, how india is is going to gain from an fta in uh, in you know with with eu and what are the road blocks yes uh, sir eu is important to us uh, from the perspective of trade uh, which is which is with uh, we are going ahead with free trade agreement sir apart from that uh it is also important uh, because of the political uh, interests that we have overall across the world sir uh, for uh, for the support of eu and uh, g20 or else even in uh, uh, united nations uh, sir if we go ahead with free trade agreement with eu the major advantages would be uh, the market access that our uh, labor intensive uh, exports might get like especially the textiles and even uh, some uh, concessions on the uh, side of sanitary and phytosanitary measures that eu puts up will give boost to our exports uh, to the eu sir uh, the major road blocks are sir uh, in the areas of uh, trips uh, and uh, trips plus agreement that eu is trying to impose as well as uh, the bilateral investment treaty the model bilateral investment treaty of government of india uh, which is not being accepted uh, or on the acceptable terms with eu these are the major road blocks uh, that are there so tell me what is this latest carbon border adjustment mechanism which they have imposed Uh, and india is resisting and and opposing yes sir uh, sir uh, this mechanism uh, is about uh, taxing of uh, commodities that are being imported from other countries uh, in the european union region uh, that are carbon intensive so eu wants to uh, tax the certain products uh, which are carbon intensive so has to green so has to push forward towards green transition mm -hmm. and also uh, make it competitive for the domestic industries of eu who are uh, taking efforts towards uh, carbon neutrality or carbon negativeness good so uh, civil engineering can help india uh, to become a developed nation how uh sir uh, there are uh, so on some friends i see it can like there are multiple friends where it can uh, make us a uh, developed world sir firstly the large scale infrastructure projects which we can undertake construction of uh, massive uh, uh, cities or smart cities uh, which will help us modernizing our infrastructure as, as well as promoting energy efficiency if we take uh, steps towards smart cities uh, secondly sir the employment generation scope that is there in uh, civil uh, uh, construction projects be it uh, at the manufacturing of the uh, uh, products that are used like cement or uh, steel industry or else in the construction process itself as well as the engineers that are required all this will give boost to uh, the economic and employment uh, growth sir 
and apart from this sir uh, even the innovation that we can take forward by moving towards more greener construction methods uh, will also help us in uh, improving our uh, value addition to the gdp good your uh, your option was sociology koshik tell me this uniform civil code and the provisions uh, that uttarakhand has formulated uh, can you apply in telangana and can we replicate the provisions as they are in the entire country uh, sir uh, sir in my opinion uh, the uniform civil code of uttarakhand uh, can be applied to some extent sir uh, wherein it brings about uh, equality of women uh, with respect to various aspects like marriage uh, adoption and uh, uh, inheritance of property rights in telangana and it must be done sir in order to promote gender equality uh, but there might be some hur hurdles in the process uh, that might there might be some resistance from the conservative sections of the society across the country in any state uh, so so give me your views uh, koshik then that when uttarakhand itself has not made it uniform by excluding tribes yes and there are many country uh, many states in india which have tribal predominance population yes so article 44 said that something which you extend for the whole of the country union territory uh, i mean the territory of india so if we are having different in different states where is the need to have a uniform because it's not a uniform a civil code what do you say uh sir i do agree sir uh, uh that we need it is not possible to have complete uniform civil code so what we uh, what in my opinion will be the good way forward would be uh bringing in laws that are gender just and uh, eliminating unequal practices in the religion instead of going for uniformity in the name of uh, unity or uh, bringing in justice uh, across uh, these uh, societies thank promoting you laws. thank you yes sir thanks thank uh kosik yes sir <coughs> uh, kosik these cities like hyderabad your city yes sir bengaluru and other big cities uh, they are so developed cities it infrastructure buildings engineering marvels a lot yes, of sir. things are there uh they attract a lot of people also yes sir. uh but uh, they have not done good to their natural things say water body do you have water bodies in hyderabad secunderabad uh sir, some lake sort of thing uh we have small lakes uh like we have hussein sagar sir ah. apart from that we have a few other lakes on the peripherals of the city Peripheral. but the city uh, lakes in the city have been occupied or uh, have been occupied yes encroached upon yes so uh, similar similar story of other metropolitan city also the point is this uh, do you think that this such type of development of cities over a long period of when we want to compete with the with the, with the cities of the western countries like america uk germany uh, do you think that uh, we are on a sustainable path uh sir uh, definitely not sir uh, like uh, compromising on the natural resources or uh, uh, environmental sustainability in the process of development uh, in my opinion is not uh, on the sustainable path sir uh, instead we have to uh, move towards more greener growth a greener approach towards growth like uh, going for uh, development of uh, smart cities as well as uh, greener cities like increasing the green cover of the cities and sir some efforts are being taken uh, even in hyderabad sir with respect to this like telangana's hartaharam uh, where uh, they have cons uh, they have planted many uh, plants uh, sapling uh, hmm. but however the damage is much more we need to take more efforts yes the damage is much much more in proportion yes sir so what what type of effort that's why that is my question what type of efforts you are going to take say in hyderabad you know, you have another league so what is it pet some pet gandhi uh, yes sir we have gandhi pet or something na gandhi pet so lot of garbage is there lot of garbage lot of encroachment also yes sir isn't that and hussein sagar also yes so uh, there is an usman sagar i think yes sir gandhi pet usman sagar usman sagar, sagar yeah, yeah yeah so uh, these are in horrible sites true sir isn't that Yes, sir. So, uh, what type of uh, sustainable development? What type of city, IT city, you are going to show to the tourist or to the world? So, what type of intervention you are going to take, Kosik? If you are posted there, suppose. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, if given an opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I would do is uh, the stricter implementation of building regulations, sir. That 
ensuring that there is no encroachment on the lakes good uh, secondly sir uh, taking efforts to uh, rejuvenate the existing lakes that have got polluted hmm. with the help of civil society as well as uh, with the help of government bodies Mm. uh thirdly sir uh, following zero discharge policy mm. uh, like especially the industries that are polluting or mm. even the domestic waste uh, by promoting more sewage treatment plants as well as uh, uh, effluent treatment plants in the industries mm. uh, along with this sir uh, i see i feel that uh, the uh, i have personally seen gandipet being destroyed because my office was close to it mm. uh, so the regulation on the con- new construction that are taking place uh, should be done sir uh, because they are the ones uh, that i personally observed are dumping waste near the lakes yes uh, so this needs to be done uh, okay um, kosik in hyderabad surprisingly in south india in hyderabad people speak hindi they they talk in hindi they understand hindi quite well yes sir. why why in a, why not in other cities of south india only in hyderabad what is the region uh, sir it is the nature of people uh, who welcome uh, very easily uh, different cultures and are uh, able to adapt themselves mm. as well as the influence of uh, nizam uh, culture that was there uh, and uh, i would say mostly it's the nature of people so they are more uh, welcoming to learning new things as well as they themselves adapt to even people coming from outside uh, whereas uh, on the other cities maybe that is not happening that is not coming um uh, now tell me something your sociology is optional you have opted what is the difference between modernization and westernization yes sir uh sir modernization uh, might involve uh, uh moving towards modern values which are not uh, always western ideas uh, whereas westernization will involve uh, adopting of values from the western world uh, or the influence of the western world on the india and these concepts have been uh, given by various sociologists sir. the major difference lies that we shouldn't equate uh, westernization with modernization even what modernization can uh, occur even in the east it modernization is a universal concept whereas westernization is a concept which says ideas come from the west uh, westernization is a bad thing or a good thing or a mixed type of thing uh sir it is a mixed thing sir uh, because uh, uh there are some values which we can adopt from the western society which is which is progressive at the same time uh, the discussion we had just any now, any 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 value you, as per your idea any value from west which is useful which is good in india uh sir uh, i would say during the time of british the influence of western education and the reforms that uh, it led to can be said one of the influence of western ideas uh, but they are modern as well on the other hand sir the negative aspects would be uh, the things we have discussed uh, earlier like uh, the fast growing of cities in an unsustainable manner uh, and uh, going towards construction that is not sustainable to a particular climatic zone like hyderabad using glass buildings uh, yeah. things like this yeah my last question is about traveling yes you are fond of traveling yes sir. what is this udan yojana uh sir it is a scheme of the government of india sir uh, which uh, aims to promote connectivity to uh, some regions which are not well connected uh, and promoting more air connectivity that is uh, development of airports and air strips in uh, backward regions as well as in the regions that are not connected uh, well with the present uh, cities and towns so how many airports we have, now we have got in india uh-huh. sir uh, i am not sure of the exact number uh, i remember it is around 140 uh, around 140 sir. thank you thank you kaushik thank you sir <coughs> kaushik uh, introduction of bullet train yes sir uh, how will it uh, how will it help viksit bharat uh, um, pardon sir i didn't get the question viksit bharat Vixit. how will we achieve viksit bharat if we introduce bullet train Uh, yes. why should we spend so much we can spend elsewhere also yes. do you think bullet train and vikshit bharat are somehow connected uh, uh yes sir i do see that uh, they are some they are connected sir because uh, saying we are going to be a developed country we also need to uh, improve our infrastructure and uh, one such way is improving connectivity and faster connectivity uh, bullet train is the first step that we are taking uh, and it is a uh, step in the right direction uh, for the long future long term uh, goal sir that is improving faster connectivity between cities and that will help uh, movement of people on a large scale uh, sir i would say 
uh, it will lead to further growth in long term uh, but at present uh, it is needed sir uh, the, this <coughs> investment capital investment is needed greater thing will be the technology yes sir yes sir uh, tell me five constitutional amendments during last 75 years that have made india stronger Uh, sir, I would say uh, the recent uh, uh, Nari Shakti Bandhan Adhiniyam uh, uh, bill, uh, not the amendment but the bill and the amendments that I have done to the articles, uh, giving uh, a reservation to the women uh, is one step sir. Okay. Uh, secondly, even uh, the 73rd and 74th Constitution Amendment Act uh, promoting uh, decentralization of governance uh, is also another step sir. Uh, uh, Sir, even the 42nd Constitution Amendment Act, uh, which has given, uh, which has inserted words like secular and sovereign in our in our preamble, is another one step, sir. Uh, uh, these are the three things. All right. So you mentioned about preamble. Supreme yes. Court recently heard this case on uh, amendment to preamble. Yes, sir. Can you recall what were the Supreme Court's observations? Uh, uh, so the major uh, observation was uh, the case was about uh, uh, the date uh, amendment of the date. Uh, I am not able to recall. All right, no problem, no problem. Uh, what is difference between generative AI and AI? Yes. And which is more uh, uh, harmful for humanity? Yes. Uh, Sir, uh, firstly the difference between both of them, uh, sir, uh, sir, artificial intelligence uh, is the application of technology uh, to mimic human like intelligence, sir. Uh, it might not be generative or it might not lead to conversations or uh, uh, it, it might not lead to conversations, sir. whereas generative AI is much uh, more deeper uh, technology associated with artificial intelligence, uh, which might uh, uh, lead to more uh, greater engagement between people and uh, it has more uh, capability of uh, curated content that is delivered to the person's requirement. Uh, sir, in my opinion, uh, both of them are dangerous as well as good. Uh, we cannot uh, segregate. All right. One last question I want to ask you is from green revolution to evergreen revolution, what was the need to switch over from one revolution to another? Uh, so, because uh, the green revolution, while it has contributed to uh, growth of food productivity uh, as well as increase in food productivity, it has also pushed us on the path of unsustainability. Uh, so, there was need uh, to go towards more greener uh, approach towards uh, agriculture revolution. Uh, that is the major reason I see. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, good evening, Kaushik. Good evening, sir. So, I would like to uh, discuss on sovereign credit rating of India. So the global credit rating agencies generally do not give very good investment grade to India. Why is it so? We are politically and economically very stable too. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, from my understanding and what I have read, uh, the reasons that they give uh, for not giving the ratings are uh, uh, that we have low per capita income. Uh, and also that our debt is uh, more when compared to the GDP and uh, they uh, they are uh, not very confident about India's uh, repaying capacity uh, and uh, further sir they also uh, give reasons of economic uh, policy instability as well as a monetary policy instability uh, for which they give uh, low ratings. So what are the views expressed by the government of India regarding this? Uh, sir, uh, government of India has uh, opposed uh, the rating agencies in a way uh, because uh, they do not represent the true, true picture uh, because considering uh, the growth rate of our economy as well as uh, our uh, history of being a very stable economy uh, after the 1991 uh, crisis and uh, performing consistently well in on the front of exports even with respect to internal growth uh, the ratings are not uh, genuine or uh, is the criticism of government of India. Okay. Uh, Kaushik, I would like to have your opinion on the recent Supreme Court decision on electoral bonds. What's your take on that? Uh, sir, my opinion is that uh, it is a 
right decision sir considering uh, uh, the uh, importance of uh, right to information to the voter uh, because as a voter uh, uh, any person would want to know uh, what is happening with respect to the parties or the investment and uh, the entire structure uh, and uh, the arguments given by the supreme court uh, are what uh, i even i was thinking before the judgment uh, like with respect to uh, not having the access to information as a voter uh, so i see that uh, it is in the right direction sir. now the problem of uh, loneliness and social isolation is on the rise so what measures would you suggest as a student of sociology to improve this situation especially among youths uh sir uh, as a student of sociology uh, my observation is that increasing uh, addiction towards technology or in this fast paced technology world uh, the time that we are spending with uh, the people is reducing this is leading to loneliness so the first step would be uh, i would encourage greater social capital and social contact uh, with the peers within the family as well as the society in general uh, secondly sir uh, talking about issues concerning the loneliness in an open manner uh, without uh, attaching any stigma to it from the side of society as well as the individual uh, is the second step sir uh, thirdly uh, i would ask people to seek help uh, if they are in some kind of distress uh, or if they feel like talking to someone and at the same time uh, we need to uh, tell people or educate them that it is important to uh, help someone who is feeling lonely Uh, and that uh, we need to develop the social solidarity or even the normal uh, contact that is required in order to avoid these issues now coming to brics now how expansion of brics will impact india uh sir uh, the expansion of brics uh, will give greater voice and greater uh, support to india's concerns on the global stage sir because as we expand brics and bring in more countries from different regions into it uh, we would see that uh, there we can build consensus on some global issues or some global reforms uh, with the support of these countries uh, further this will help us in forwarding uh, india's interest at the global stage how it can impact negatively sir so negatively i see that uh, as brics expand uh, the progress of the brics might itself hamper because there might be disagreements between multiple countries coming up uh, and uh, uh, the progress on certain decisions might be delayed or uh, some conflicts that are outside the brics might come into brics uh. okay now you are uh, mba from uh, iift basically so why not a career in corporate sector and why you are choosing a career in civil services uh sir uh, initially uh, the motivation was given by my mother sir who motivated me to get into civil services and i did experience uh, corporate sector for one year sir and uh, this during this one year even i had uh, some experience of interacting with the senior civil servants uh, as well as uh, thinking about my own uh, long term goals uh, which i felt that will be more fulfilled uh, in the civil services uh, as well as uh, i felt that uh, having had the privileges that i had Uh, to get uh, whatever i want or achieve in the with respect to my academics or the institutions that i want to study in uh, i've also realized that not everyone has these opportunities so i felt uh, i will use uh, the knowledge that i've gained uh, in the uh, civil services to provide these opportunities to others okay so thank you koshik i pass on to chairman sir thank you sir so koshik uh, we have covered lot of areas from your lab but in case you think that some area some thing has not been covered so far i can ask you one last question uh sir uh, any question about my work experience or trade uh, right. from the college no i'll i'll ask on cap gemini so what was your work uh, as a consultant there uh, sir uh, i was uh, dealing with a project of merger and acquisition sir wherein uh, we were doing current state analysis of uh, both the companies uh, platforms so as to merge them uh, and uh, promote uh, their integration mm -hmm. and i was leading a team of uh, three consultants uh, along with me and uh, we were uh, dealing with a client based out of india mm -hmm. and uh, performing current state analysis and uh, uh, promoting integration of these uh, platforms uh, was a major role mm -hmm. so how how do these mergers help uh you know to to 
either revive the one which is is not doing so well uh, like we had the merger of banks also in india yes so why do you think merger is required because the bigger bank or maybe the bigger organization what is it that they are they are gaining from merger with a smaller a weaker organization yes sir uh, sir in my opinion and from the understanding that i had uh, mergers will help uh, both the companies sir the company that is uh, taking over the stakes of the smaller company or the uh, not well performing company would want to enter into a particular market this will give it access to that particular market through this uh, particular existing company it will also give access to the uh, company's existing customer base in case of insurance industry that i work in and further sir uh, they also must have a uh, well dis- uh, well established distribution channels of the agents uh, but sir but kaushik uh, in uh, if you want to use each other's expertise consortium is a better option uh, i think merger is more of uh, you know desperation of at least one organization and uh, i would say exploitation by the bigger one what do you say uh, sir uh, I do agree, sir. To mm-hmm. some extent, that is true. Uh, even the uh, majority of the mergers do take place in that way. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, sir, uh, many startups are also seeking for this kind of merger because they want to sell off stakes. So, startup always have a you know in the vision itself they have that after <laughs> yes sir, true, sir. after they have you know amassed some Mark kind up. of uh, recognition or maybe value. then they would merge and get the money and then go away anyway so kaushik it was uh, uh, good to speak to you so we close our interview now thank you sir. you may proceed to the next uh, room and we'll call you again in another one or two minutes yes sir thank you sir so kaushik how did you do in the mocks today uh, i think i've done you have done well and you have taken few more mocks earlier yes sir this is my third mock third mock so what what is that you saw in the last uh, mock and improve on it uh, sir uh, i felt that uh, i was better responding to the questions uh, so kaushik you have done very well in fact you are a very good personality very bright and we are very impressed with your performance one of the best candidates that we have had today and also the top most category 5% category you are that's one having said this you are confident about what you are or your entire presence here was full of confidence comfort so you were taking questions very with lot of ease and uh, you were handling them very well and uh, good content and uh, uh, concise precise to the extent you should speak and you came out with all qualitative content You know, instead of being very narrational, you were hitting at the right thing right from the beginning. So these are all good, and it was in a conversation mode. Yes. Now, it was more or less flawless, Koshik. Few things which are not, which are trivial, but it can take an ugly shape. One is that you know when you came, there's no need to do namaskaram. Yes. Just say good evening. Good. I replied you in good evening, just uh, to make you realize that you know. I was not sure. Cross six o'clock. There is no harm in namaskaram, but you know what happens is UPSC is holding it one after another. You know, they they are disposing of. Suddenly they find somebody doing namaskaram, so they find it. You know, so they analyze was it a good thing to do? So why why do you give an opportunity for them to to be unique yes. <laughs> and become a point of discussion? Yes. Are you getting my point? Yes. And uh, so it's always do what the Romans do. Yes. Okay. So Romans generally come and say good morning, sir, and they look at everyone. If there is a ma'am, then good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sirs. If the chairman is man, good morning, sirs. Looking at the chairman. Yes. That's enough. Yes. Okay. That's one. The second thing is that. you know in questions where you are not very smooth and fluent you give pauses with a a a a yes. that was looking not so good okay now it was more of your habit 
Yes. Hmm? But in the answers that you gave initially, my my portion, you were absolutely fluent and smooth. As you went further and further, your a uh, became more. Yes. And I could make out that they were primarily because of that you are not very very fluent and clear about that particular answer. You knew the answer, but your expression was paused. You know by this. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. You must stop this. Yes. Okay. You have time, Koshi. Not a big thing. Yes. See your video. Yes. And uh, maybe those areas where you think that because of lack of knowledge you had to do this, plug those loopholes. Yes. Right. That is number two. And thirdly, although honourable member, the last member who asked you questions would have covered, but I'll just take it partly. Your last answer about uh, why. You want to go to IAS and not in the corporate sector. Was you reframe it? Yes. How would you reframe it? Uh, Honourable member will tell you. Yes. All right. That's all from my side. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Kosik, you are quite bright, very excellent uh, candidate. You have done very well. In all, in my all questions, you have done very very well. Uh, in one question um, yeah, regarding the Hindi speaking Hyderabad. Uh, I think uh, the more importance may be given to the rule of Nizam. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Sir. Because that was a more influence. That was a strong influence yes, on the people. Number one. Number two. Uh, but you are giving more importance to the people yes. are friendly in nature. And in that context, in the continuation of that, you also said that other region. other uh, cities. Uh, yes, you compared it. other cities. Uh, and it looked uh, as if you kept other cities in a very bad light. Yes. Sir. Say Bang uh, Bangalore or Chennai or something like that. No? Yes. Sir. So you should never do that. Yes. Sir. Don't. Uh, yes. Sir. I yeah. realized it as soon as I did. So don't do that. And uh, the influence, the rule of Nizam was uh, important factor for that uh, Hindi speaking thing. You know, uh, people are friendly in every cities. Yes. Sir. So, yes, uh, so just that small correction. Overall, you are a very, very fantastic candidate, and you are ready for the interview. Yes. All the best. Thank you, sir. So, Kashik, uh, you were very good, very good personality. Uh, two points I just want to make. One is uh, <coughs> green revolution to ever green revolution. Yes. Why India moved? You should have connected environmental, economic, and social impacts. Yes. All right, because with changing times, with changing times, all these had to be addressed. Yes. And you have seen what happened to Punjab. Yes. So your reply was one sentence and without touching on yes, any of social. these uh, aspects. So I think you can work on that. Bullet train. Never forget to mention about technology. technology. Yes. And how relevant it is if India has to become developed. Country, then technology will be one thing that we have to have with us. In addition to you know what what all other technologies, railway has got to have the best yes. uh, technology in train running. Five am amendment that made India stronger. You mentioned only three. Yes. Think about yes. Two more. All right. Yes. Sir. So you need not give. Too detailed. Simply indicate the reference to article or amendment number. That's it. Uh, your personality is good. Your replies are precise to the point, except for uh, these two cases that I yes. mentioned. So, wish you all the best. Thank you. So, Kaushik, good personality, good communication. You have covered almost all the areas. You are almost ready for the interview. Just keep working on content. Yes. On uh, the uh, suggestion for why civil services question. So never ever mention about your mother or uh, name anyone. Yes. Uh, as our chairman sir generally says, it should be your own decision, yes. your own resolve. Yes. Secondly, uh, do not uh, quote also you were influenced by someone. Yes. So you can avoid that portion also. Yes, and it also made your answer a bit longish. Yes, sir. So you can just uh, rephrase uh, and you can use uh, words like public service at a wider platform or a larger platform. Yes. Then 
diverse opportunities yes then challenging career yes these three points on these lines a bit of professional answer yes so it will cover the aspect of uh, your uh, giving back to the society which you were trying to mention yes. the public service is a better word yes so stick to this yes otherwise you have done very well wish you all the best thank you sir okay can any questions from your side uh, that's it sir. we have given you 69 percent yes 190 marks yes so this is your first attempt uh, kashik i saw yes sir and uh, you have played the mains in the first round itself yes which means you are very bright and do your best in this yes you will pull up marks yes and be in the list yes all the best thank you sir.